Sure, we can follow a recipe and see a salmon while sitting movies. But why do that when Cook Unity will deliver delicious pre-selected meals straight to our doors? Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform that delivers meals that we don't have to cook ourselves. We just have to heat them, giving all of us more time to watch and sin what we love. Cook Unity chefs offer up a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Pull a delicious meal from the fridge, add heat, and enjoy. Or trick your mom into thinking you actually attempted to cook. In this week's box, I received penne pasta with turkey bolognese, a chorizo breakfast burrito, and a delicious seared salmon. Salmon was incredible. This is the kind of dish that I'd get in a restaurant, but it was mailed straight to my house. The subscription is super flexible, and you can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. The meals are fresh, tasty, filling, and Cook Unity is offering you half off your first order if you use this handy-dandy code. Use the code CINEMASINS50 at checkout at cookunity.com slash CINEMASINS50, or just click the link in the description for 50% off your first order. Thanks to Cook Unity for the delicious meals and for sponsoring today's video. Forty seconds on one logo. One logo, which is essentially a promo for the movie I've already paid to watch. Come on, Drax, dance. Only idiots dance. No, only idiots dance to Radiohead's creep. This massive one-shot is, I remind you, of a CGI raccoon. The entire sequence is probably 75% or more CGI, which takes away from the awesomeness and the whole point of doing a one-shot. And someone's gonna find a behind-the-scenes clip showing some human actor in a mocap suit doing this whole walk, and that is kind of my point. Again? It's the third movie, Drax, not counting the whole Thanos thing, and you're somehow still able to be disappointed by Peter Quill. The dog spacesuit is cute, but how do you expect this animal to do its business, you psychopath? <laughs> Is this public area really the best place to be practicing with the death stick? Everyone chuckles because he got lucky and hit the robot who could take a spear to the chest, but I'd like to see how much they'd be laughing if it hit a kid or a dog or an eyeball. Nebula, did you hear? He called me a bad dog! Stealing the dogs can talk translator from the movie Up, made by the studio Pick Squirrel. Mantis, why don't you just touch him and, you know, make him happy? I am Groot. Gross. Now, giving Groot the grossest line possible so you can slip the grossest line possible into your Disney-approved movie. It is wrong to manipulate the feelings of friends. <laughs> that is literally the definition of having friends. Character we think is a hard ass takes off their shirt and reveals a bunch of scars, suggesting they're even hard assier than we thought cliche. <laughs> Rocket's tiny raccoon body survives this in a way that Newton would be personally offended by. I bet he'd hate the MCU. On the ground! Uh, Great! A fight between a character I've known for a while but whose powers I know nothing about versus a brand new guy whose powers I know nothing about set in a city that is derivative of half a dozen sci-fi movie cities. Forgive me if it takes me a moment or two to find my orgasm. The genetically modified demigod with laser palms and the power of flight choosing to throw hands. Who is that maniac? Some super douche with ray gun hands! The original working title for Iron Man somehow makes it into the script. Warlock tearing Groot tree limb from limb sure feels like it should be a big deal. But since we've literally seen this character die, that orgasm is still eluding me. We need med packs! Med packs? Is this a video game now? Stitch him up and transfer him in with the rest of Batch 89. And so begins Rocket's tragic origin story, which he will conveniently play out in his mind scene by scene and in chronological order as we go through the rest of the movie because that is exactly how coma dreaming works. I'd think twice about touching him with that filthy cage rag unless you want the second word he learns to be infected. Also, f whichever asshole at MCU HQ who thought I needed to see a terrified baby raccoon be provided with the gift of sapience only for his first experience to be lobotomy-induced agony. And it doesn't end there, kids. We're gonna see a sh ton more animated animal abuse over the next two and a half hours. I don't care if it's only CG animals. I don't come to my Marvel movies expecting to constantly second screen DoesTheDogDie.com. A kill switch? A device. Set to destruct if anyone goes poking around inside him. My parents gave me a kill switch too. It was called guilt. Why would Rocket have a kill switch? Apparently someone considers some proprietary technology and sent that golden lunatic to get him. F***ing what? How did she know Warlock was even after Rocket? And even if she did, why would she assume this highly specific motive? The real kicker is that she ends up being 100% correct, despite this being one of the leapiest leaps of logic since Leonard the Leaping Leopard won Best Leaper at the Logical Leap Olympics. So he'll die if we operate on him? And he'll die if we don't. That sucks. Anyone for tacos? He'll know people. Kill one guy, one stupid guy who no one loves. Finding contrived ways to drag Bucky Barnes into every MCU movie. 
Also, Drax seems to be completely healed, despite getting his face fully f***ed up by Billy Bandersnatch a few minutes ago. Take back word you said that I'm a bad dog. Nope. This is just a setup so that he can take it back at the end of the movie when the dog does something heroic, because that's just how movies are, and I'm dead inside. I located the coordinates for Orgo Corp. I think I have a contact near there. Maybe they can help us get in. Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. And yet, Blue Gamora here happens to have a contact right where they want to go. Well, wonders never cease. If you watched the first Guardians movie and thought, hey, that was great, but it could really use more Sid from Toy Story, well, have I got the Disturbing Nightmare Fuel trilogy concluder for you. That moment when you know the location, text prompts are meaningless due to the infinite nature of space, so you make them full of gibberish. I believe I know where they're going. How could you know that? Why would you assume that the Guardians immediately figured out his plan and were setting a course for Orgo Corp HQ? Warlock doesn't even know how badly injured Rocket is, so why would he know they're going there for help? Why is everyone f***ing omniscient in this movie? It's bioformed. Instead of being built, it's grown from living matter. Instead of show, don't tell, this movie is going for the show for a long time and then tell even though no one asked method of exposition. Also, I think someone needs to check the melodrama dial on Nebula. I think it's set a few notches higher than necessary for that statement. First shield set. So when Nebula said, The structure is surrounded by three impenetrable plasmic security shields. Earlier, she was completely full of sh** and meant very penetrable and with extremely little effort needed. You had family on Earth, and you never wanted to go back to see them? Nope. He just wanted to make Jackson Pollock jokes in space and eventually deify and allow the redemption of the entity that took him captive as a small boy. You can surrender and turn over any stuff worth anything and live, or you can die. How it's up to you. The fact that Totes has left Earth and infected whatever part of the galaxy this is. You're early. Nice try, but that's basically the same as you're late, so f*** you. The fact that the crying laughy face emoji has left Earth and infected whatever part of the galaxy this is. Be not as you are, but as you should be. It's our secret mission. Sounds like church. We have but a single quest. To create the perfect species and the perfect society. That sounds like two separate quests, actually. Not a single one. Can't play it for you, but any movie that uses a Space Hog song will receive a sin off from me. Based on these colorful suits, it looks like Skittles abandoned Shazam in the DCU quicker than James Gunn abandoned Henry Cavill. Also, each of the Guardians has a different colored suit, which makes it easy for us to tell them apart, but has no other in-universe reason other than to embarrass Quill in a few minutes. We loved each other. I don't think so. I'm with New Gamora. Quill and Gamora never demonstrated love in any previous film. Flirtation, maybe. Lost, maybe. But they never had a love-based relationship. And this is part of why Quill ruining the apprehension of Thanos in Infinity War is so f***ing stupid. Because none of these movies ever earned that anger from Quill. Because they never earned the relationship between he and Gamora. You were everything to me. And I miss you. Maybe if you, if you open yourself up to it. What a f***ing dick. You're asking what amounts to someone's clone to fall in love with you because another version of them kind of liked you. You don't know this Gamora and she doesn't know you and I guarantee you she's better off for it. <laughs> Galactic fat jokes. Casting Nathan Fillion in the MCU by stuffing him in one of the weirder outfits from Doctor Who. You threw them in the contamination bin. It expelled stuff into space the moment you shut the door. That would have been helpful information three minutes ago. Mantis would be the wedding singer at CinemaSins. Orgo Corp has been producing cybernetic implants and genetic upgrades across the universe. And nobody thought that maybe this is where the genetically upgraded raccoon might have come from? You had to read his internal organs to figure this shit out? That must be the spaceport. A lot of this two and a half hour movie is characters pointing out shit that they see. What does this society have against solid machine interface controls? You're a kitty cat. No! Thinking that a kitty cat is any less of a danger to your life than a regular ass person. Never forget, we forever live under their gracious permission. Violent rage. You can say anything and you pick this? What if she just focused that violent rage on you, her target? Let's kill that one that looks like a carrot to show we mean business. This movie is Ant-Man 3 so far. Only instead of the quantum realm, it's this space biome thing. Gooey ship controls, joking about aliens that look like vegetables, a villain in purple that started out with good intentions. Prove me wrong. And then I lost my temper and nearly destroyed half the universe. Record scratch, motherfucker. You did destroy half the universe. It was just undone later by time travel that was invented in a single evening. But you definitely destroyed half the fucking universe with your lost temper. Everyone else who died in the past stayed dead. Not her. Why? Was it the magic cliff? I don't know. Not some freaking Infinity Stone scientist. Oh, wow. We're just going to use this elevator ride as a way to air out all the nonsense that doesn't make sense in Infinity War and Endgame? Well, sh**. Is this ride really going to take 47 minutes or less? Drax is on the ground after two gunshots and Nebula is throwing up and I hope you didn't think any of these characters were going to die. Quill tries to convince this large female Oompa Loompa to help them. And after a scolding from Green Gamora, it works. 
Tell them your truth. Yeah, I'm not that big of an idiot. I just needed to get into the system. No, you asked to get into their comms, but conveniently their thrusters are all part of the same system. I'm sorry if I think that seems like incredibly poor, convenient programming. Also, do the sentries not have a way to control the suits themselves? Okay, I can see this working as a distraction for a few seconds, but the Guardians take a casual stroll out of here while all the guards just decide to keep floating around helplessly. Groot absolutely crash lands the spaceship, but they all take off with no problem in the next shot. Me be called Floor because me is lying on floor. This movie is too broad of Frankenstein's long. Help me, Grooty Drax Kenobi. No, but if I was removed today. This bulging Rubik's Cube gizmo is goddamn magic. I saw this guy outside of records today. Isn't it great when the universe lets you bump into exactly the person you need to bump into? What he wants is that gutted badger in the med bay, and you're gonna bring it straight to him? It's almost certainly a trap! That's a concern for certain, but for now I'm more preoccupied with why you know the word badger and know that it's similar enough to a raccoon to be a substitute. But also, if this is a trap, it's the worst trap ever because it relies on Quill remembering this guy bumped into him and someone on the team knowing who he is. Especially impossible considering Gamora is the one that links him back to the High Evolutionary and there's no way he could have known they'd hire her. Screw all of you. The thing I said at my high school graduation that caused my diploma to be delayed by several months somehow makes its way into the script. Outpost, this is Gamora, are you there? Naturally, he was completely disintegrated, but his comm device managed to survive, allowing the Sovereigns to have a way to get to Quill. Honestly, everyone in this movie appears to be running on ignorance and blind luck. You need to say to him exactly what I told you to say. Why don't you just say it? No one ever listens to me. You have the ability to touch people and alter the mind's perception of reality. They literally have no choice but to listen to you. Y you're simply a medley of mistakes we could learn from and apply to the creatures that truly mattered. Dad? In case you confused it with Counter Earth T5 MQPZ 84635W8E plus 7TYOX1. We're not here to harm you for your knee. But we are here to infect you with our disgusting pocket rags. What is it with this movie and sloppy wound management? Now what? Open the f***ing door! That is a stupid design. And your instructions were very unclear. I think the instructions were to find the most inane way to drop Marvel's first F-bomb. Seems pretty clear to me. Based on her expression, I assume Gamora is thinking, Man, I wonder why these chuckle f***s are taking that weird metal box instead of this f***ing spaceship. I don't know why, but there is an entire cult of Hollywood creators that think there is nothing that pleases us more than seeing our sci-fi heroes driving around in f***ing 20th century cars. Also, why do they think there's going to be a parking lot and ground entrance to this place? Please, just give me one advantage to taking the car. Snooping. She stays here. Why? Policy against weaponry, and your arm is a gun. Well, then why are you letting Groot in? His entire body is a weapon. They don't even bother to scan it. What is that? It's a key. Actually, it's a key made from parts he's been stealing over time that all fit together perfectly like Lego blocks without the need for any wiring, soldering, and minimal MacGyvering. It really is good to have fun. In the space of two minutes, we're treated to the bloody corpses of the adorable otter, walrus, and bunny that we've spent the last hour getting attached to. Went. Drax the Destroyer, lovable comic relief hero, and innocent civilian rat murderer all in one. So Quill didn't know how to drive a car, but Drax knows how to drive a motorcycle. I don't need another speech by some impotent whack job whose mother didn't love him, rationalizing why he needs to conquer the universe. Did you used to work for Tesla? Pleated space toilets. There's an intruder alarm sounding right now, but do you know what would have worked even better? Closing the f***ing doors! Drop the badger. Apparently Rocket needed that life support machine as much as he needed to not be dropped on a metal deck from four feet. It's some pretty lucky timing for Gamora that Adam shows up exactly now. If Gamora wasn't indestructible, I'm not sure her story would be able to continue. She's indestructible, right? That's her power. What kind of ship is this? One that can survive a lot of really nearby explosions, apparently. The explosion blocks off the room from the High Evolutionary, but he waits over a minute and a lot of his staff getting killed before doing this. Quite a novel escape plan. Jumping headfirst into an exploding planet. Was this really the plan all along? How did Quill know they'd be taken to a place with an external window? Or that they'd have the opportunity to be this close to the guy with the key code in his head? I don't think this was the plan at all. Quill kills this guy in the most unnecessarily imaginative way possible, but why kill him at all? How do you know that his data thing doesn't need him alive to work? How does he know that jimmying it out of his skull with a utility knife isn't going to corrupt the data? I don't think this was the plan at all. The MCU providing two more graduates from the Prometheus School of running away from things. Also, either Gamora was aiming for Quill and Groot, needlessly putting their lives in danger with this crash landing, or she had no control at all and the ship just happened to crash land perfectly in line with where they were and the universe wants them dead. Also, 
also volume two. We just saw Groot sprout wings and glide them to safety. And the best trick he has to avoid them getting squished is falling down. What kind of monster slaughters a civilization? Says the daughter of the guy who slaughtered half the universe. She should be very familiar with this type of person. You think I'm stupid? Yes. Forget. Holy sh Mattis, that is lazy, selfish, and I'm pretty sure it's unethical to the nth degree. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We were right. The sky is beautiful, and it is forever. Either this is truly Lila sending Rocket a message from the great beyond, and James Gunn is responsible for inventing an MCU afterlife, or this apology means jack sh because Rocket is imagining all of it and none of this matters. No! No! No. There are the hands that made us, and then there are the hands that guide the hands. Everyone is made by someone. Cool. But that doesn't stop this from being the most well-crafted, yet nothing meaning sentiment I think I've ever heard. There is the sea that sees us, and the sea that sees that sea, as it sees upon all that can be seen within the sea to be seen by all that can see. End scene. I guess I'm no expert on experimented on hyper-intelligent raccoon anatomy, but this still feels like an impossible CPR cliche. And yeah, he says the pass key's going through here in a second, but that's absurd. Rocket was dead. Rocket, we love you very much and we're happy you're alive. Mantis has time for this. They will die unless you bring me what is mine! Screw you, you stretch-faced Robocop looking Skeletor wannabe! Purple Nurple, peace up! Quill really didn't learn a single lesson from the whole losing my temper got half the universe dusted experience, did he? Does he not like Nebula, Mantis, and the funny one? Nothing else matters! Never care for, for what they do! Mantis' neck survives this. Why didn't you tell us you knew their language this whole time? Why didn't you ask? This is dumb. Not Drax is dumb, but dumb because Drax would have already spoken this language at some point in the last however long they've been encountering orb people. As soon as they landed on that fake Earth, there was a language barrier everyone was struggling with. Drax is stupid, to be sure, but he's also impulsive and oddly honest, so the only reason he didn't speak the orb language before now was so that this joke could exist. The Ravagers show up a few minutes after the Guardians, which makes it convenient as hell. But someone's gonna say, hey, maybe they coordinated a time to arrive back when Quill called them. And those people are forgetting that they use that instant transportation space hexagon thing. So if they did plan a time to show up, the Ravagers are late, and that makes them dicks. Open the pit. Sire, our bargaining power will be gone. I'm starting to not understand what is happening. Obelisk! She pronounced discount Sarlacc strangely. Wait, did space decide to stop acting like space? That is a f***ing hole in his cockpit. Why isn't his everything depressurizing or getting blown out or doing whatever the f***ing sealed environment prevents space from doing to organic flesh? Why is space broken in this movie? Everything is gonna be okay. But I am going to mind control you and ride you into battle against your will. That cool? Dude, James Gunn's brother, maybe you should have sent some troops here in a smaller ship and not brought the entire skull-contained society. Use your heart, boy. Force ghosts. She's a good dog. <sighs> I'm done running. This is badass. But also, it doesn't make a lot of sense, since he was a captive and wasn't really ever running. This movie is seven hours long, mainly because it has 14 of these slow motion power walks to the tune of a pop culture reference. I can't play it for you, but the sin is, movie copies the Chris Pine Star Trek movies by having a Beastie Boys song in a prominent scene, but it still ends up just reminding me of the better Star Trek usage. Here is a second one shot that is mostly CGI. Yeah! <laughs> well, he recovered quickly. This stolen Rev-9 arm really does whatever the f*** the movie needs it to, doesn't it? Are those kids? This movie didn't need to be this long! It needs to be airtight for the kids to make it across! Locking up, Captain! No matter how hard you try, smooshing two things together really hard does not an airtight seal make. Probably NASA. One by one, one by one! The f*** you say? One by one? Why the f*** would they go one by one across this big-ass opening? Why are you so slow? Hurry! Kids! This thing still works. Nothing more than a step on my path! This would be a terrifying moment if we didn't already know that the High Evolutionary felt inadequate due to his inadequacies. The Guardians take turns beating the f*** out of High E, and I wish I could tell you it was entertaining or even cathartic, but instead, it simply was. Look what you did to me! Let's blur the shit out of that and hope none of us ever remember it. You didn't want to make things perfect. You just hated things the way they are. Every comment section ever. A bunch of animals come racing out of the ship, and I am positive I'm supposed to feel awesome about it, but I really just want to go to sleep. It's 
played for laughs, but this poor woman is literally going to need reconstructive facial surgery thanks to Manus and this poor terrified critter. Thought we were limiting ourselves to the higher life forms. Oh, me too. Be grateful, Quill. If they'd stuck to that rule, they'd be for sure leaving your ass behind. Peter willingly jumps out into space because he has more faith in the script than I do. Peter! Peter. Wow, I can't believe they actually did it. I mean, we all knew this was the final movie, but it still takes some balls to kill off Star-Lord in such a graphic fashion. And all oh, look, Warlock is here to retrieve his body so they can give him a proper burial. Did that look cool? He survived this? Gamora hates hugs. I bet we were fun. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Wish we, the audience, could have seen it. Might have made one or more movies more impactful. Quill leaves Rocket with a playlist that begins with Florence and the Machine. And how the f*** does Peter know about modern Earth music? Gonna add a sin for all them yub nubbin right now. Hey. Oh, bullsh**. He hasn't seen him since he was eight years old. The genetically modified demigod with laser hands and the power of flight choosing to run into battle. Holy f indulgent Christ, this movie is two hours and 30 minutes long. <laughs> I wanna ride the pony. You didn't see anything. But your egos have run wild, say ah. Uh... I swear by my pretty floor bonnet, I will end you. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Trap isn't a trap if you know the trap is trying to trap you. You bet in a bet, and if you lose, you lose the bet. I don't need another speech by some impotent whack job whose mother didn't love him, rationalizing why he needs to conquer the universe. We both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. Jump in there! You're all just making up stuff that he's saying, right? Who was made up? I'd like to take his, his face off. So that's it? The group's over? I... I quit! I quit! Hey, um. Hey, um. 